from the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural foundational Black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. Great game, as we always do. And we're going to take some calls and vibe with the family, as we always do. But before we take some calls, we got to talk about some of the current stories that's happening out here. What's up, Brother Ra? What's up, D? Let me shout out some of the regulars. What's up, Wayne? What's up, Michael Wharton? Brother Wartox? Where else we got? What's up, Malcolm in here? Shout out to all the, the new people. I see a lot of familiar faces, some unfamiliar faces, but I welcome everybody in here. Um, well, before we get started, uh, we have an event coming up at the Hidden History Museum in a couple of weeks, December 16th, Saturday, on a Retrocesse holiday celebration. It's going to be off the chain. We're going to have complimentary food complimentary drinks, um, nice music, nice networking vibe, and a comedy show. And very reasonably priced to get in. And it's a private event. There's no walk-ins. You got to get your tickets online. It is a private event. So you got to get your invite tickets online. We cannot do any walk-ins, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to turn up. So you guys are going to have a good time. There's no venue Anywhere on the West Coast, that's going to be popping the way we're popping, where you get complimentary food and drinks and a comedy show and music for a very low rate, a very reasonable rate for the holiday season. You can't beat it, man. You guys are going to have a good time. Come on through the Hidden History Museum at hiddenhistorymuseum.com, hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Speaking of celebration, you know, Beyonce, our sister Beyonce, our FBA sister, Beyonce, just released um, the film for the Renaissance Tour. And people are talking about it. I want to I want to see it. I want to see it. I'm a, I'm a fan of Beyonce. I love that sister. And it was a picture. She 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 they had her in a silver outfit and the lighting you know kind of changed her tone sometimes depending on the lighting and the setting you know people can look a little lighter people can look a little darker but damn whenever beyonce gets a a different tone in a photograph. What, what the tethers seem to lose their minds about that for some reason. What is it about in, any tethers in here? Why do y'all lose y'all mind? If Beyonce takes a picture and she looks a tad bit lighter, you're like, "Oh, look at that nigga! That nigga is bleaching her skin." Is that a projection? Because that's what y'all be doing over there. Oh, ooh, look, she's doing it too, nigga. She's doing it too. She's just like us. Is that type of no, no? Y'all calm down. Dude. The Tev is really getting a, in a tussy. Every time Beyonce takes a picture and her skin is a little lighter, sometimes it's just the lighting. Lord. But I saw something where, I think they were in Israel, and they were watching it at a theater in Israel, I think, and people had a bunch of Israeli flags, and they've now said that they've adopted her song, You Can't Break My Soul. That's going to be the official Israeli song for resistance or whatever. So a lot of people feel a certain way about that because Beyonce didn't technically co-sign that, but they just, a lot of people said, we're just going to take that song and make that uh, an Israeli protest song. And my thing is this, this whole thing where 
they got to drag us into this thing somehow. They got to, they, they don't do that with Taylor Swift. They're not getting these white artists and making any of their songs, their national anthems or their protest anthems or war songs. There, there's always this thing where they got to drag us in the mix. And I did a broadcast about this not too long ago, talking about our foundational black American moral capital. We have a certain moral capital that people need to latch on to in order to generate sympathetic views for their causes. Because foundational black Americans, we have a moral compass that is more solid than any group. Let's keep it real. Our moral compass, our propensity for resistance and doing what's right and always being on the right side of history, we're unmatched with that. We are absolutely unmatched. We stay on the right side of damn history. When we fight against oppression, like we're doing now, we're on the right side of history. You don't... The, the degenerates and the white supremacists and the, the riffraffs and the sellouts and the, the tethers who try to sell us out, you don't remember them. You remember the, the heroes. We have so many heroes within foundation of Black American society to draw upon, going all the way back to the Denmark VCs, to the Harriet Tubmans, to the Frederick Douglasses, to the so Sojourner Truths, to the John Horses and... Oh, so many of us, so many, W.B. Du Bois, um, Malcolm Martin, we, we know about the ones in the 60s, Ida B. Wells, just so many, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, the list is, is non-ending. And people, they want to exploit our moral capital. Remember the white actress who was talking crap about black people? The Jewish white woman trying to shame black people on some podcast mad because black people are not jumping up supporting Israel or anybody. We're not supporting anybody like that in large numbers. And there's this weird entitlement where we're supposed to jump up when they snap their damn fingers and do the fighting for them. And right now we're so on code, we're saying, no, we're going to let you fight your own battles. We're saying that collectively to everybody. And a lot of people are not used to us doing that. Across the board, foundational black Americans are getting hella codified. And, and, and a lot of people don't know how to act. We're treating them the same way they treat us. Shout out to the people in Chicago. The brothers and sisters in Chicago are saying, hey, all of these migrants coming in here, they got to go. What about people of color? No, 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 no. They going to have to bounce. We just, we ain't rocking with them. They're draining what little resources we have. We got so many homeless black people out here in, in the town. We got a lot of homelessness and, and, and unemployed black people and you bringing in these migrants, giving them housing and job training. No, with our tax dollars, no. The brothers and sisters in Chicago are standing up against that and loud and proud about it. So we're getting very codified and there's this whole thing where we're supposed to be everybody's lapdog. So this, this white woman gets on that podcast talking about black people, a war that ain't got nothing to do with us, literally nothing. And she's and her and, you know, Michael Rappaport and all of them been taking their little digs at us. All of them. There's a war going on in their homeland. We have zero to do with it, but all of the anger is at us. These black Americans, how come they ain't saying nothing? You black Americans, y'all, a shame on you. You've been taught to hate Jews. Y'all not saying nothing. Y'all not, why y'all so silent? Because we ain't in it. This ain't got nothing to do with us. What the fuck you mean why we're silent? This has zero to do with us. But we marched with y'all in the 60s. Family, if y'all don't check them when they say that bullshit, family, 
when they start talking that we were in the marching with you in the 60s, please check that. Man, they don't want to play that game. And the, the white woman was like, um, yeah, there were Jewish people who died in the civil rights movement. Ma'am, you, you, two people. There were two Jewish people who died, just two. The guys down there in Mississippi is two. It was one, two, one, two. That's who they're talking about, the two who died in Mississippi. We're not going to play that game. They really don't want to get a bucket list of the pros and cons. Because a lot of the discrimination that was going on, which is why we needed civil rights, was because a lot of the anti-black races within her community. They were the landlords in the 1960s who were creating slum conditions that we were fighting against, putting us in them slums. It was those in her community, the anti-black races, who were preventing us from living in suburban areas, even when we had the money. They put those restrictive covenants in those leases back during the Jim Crow era. That was her community doing that. You understand? They don't want to play that game where we start doing a tally of who did the right thing and who didn't because there are anti-black races within her com within her community that was very exploitive to black people, going all the way back to the Judah P. Benjamins, um, Jewish guy who was second in command in the Confederacy. We can go into the Cohen family out there in the Caribbean. They own thousands of slaves. Aaron Lopez, who built one of the first synagogues um, in the United States, major slave owner. They don't want to play that game where we owe somebody something because a couple of them marched in the 1960s and that was benefiting them. So yeah, we got to start checking folks on that type of stuff because we got some people within her community like the Ben Shapiro's and the Dennis Prager's and these people who have these little anti-black think tanks right now who are undermining black people. You're not going to sit here and act like we owe somebody something and people within your community are shut, shutting us down every single day. You're not going to play that game. Well, we got a lot of folks in here tonight. Let's get Shay in here. Let me get Shay in here because she was up early trying to get in. What's up, Miss Shay? Hop on, dear. Shay, let's turn your microphone on, ma'am. Miss Shay, are you having trouble, ma'am? Shay, does your baby daddy have your phone? Unmute yourself, ma'am. All right. While we're waiting on Shay to get it together. Y'all get it together with y'all phones. Y'all be slowing the vibe up. Let's get up John Horse in here. John Horse. Yo. What's good, Tree? I'm good, man. What's on your mind, brother? Not much, not much. Hey, I know um you were actually uh talking about having the um the rally in uh Washington DC, but did you ever think about having it in Chicago just with everything going on? Um, yeah, at one point. Uh, you know, because what I want to do, thank you, and thank you for the call. You know what I want to do? I want to have events every year. I want to make an annual event like a FBA celebration, man, an FBA cultural rally. You know how they do the Puerto Rican Day Parade and the Caribbean Day Parade? Just have an FBA cultural event every single year and just switch up the locations. You know, I want to do it in D.C. again because of, um, you know, the season – you know, right now it's an election year, and I think it will be impactful to have a cultural event back in D.C. again. But absolutely. You know, we want to do one in um, Atlanta, do one in um, Chicago, just switch it up every year. So absolutely. Shay, are you ready, dear? Or is your phone still janky? All right, let's get um, Nola Boy. Let's get Nola Boy in here. Nola Boy. Hey, look. What's up, man? 
Yeah. Right. Now this whole uh Jewish stuff, you know they're gonna use that for the reparations, right? You know that they this is all set up because they know we don't really support that, so they're gonna use that as a way to say, now nah, we're not gonna support your reparations. What they wasn't gonna support anyway. They they ain't doing it now. Right, exactly. They, they, they they're already not doing it. They've already spoken out against it. So yeah, yeah. that's that's nothing new. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. They're gonna use that, and then now you got the Africans, they jumping in it. They want to be involved so bad, and they're not even talking about them. That's how bad they are. So I mean, y'all not it, see, we are your only friends. Y'all support, y'all should be supporting Africa. Like it's not have nothing to do with y'all. They want to they, yeah. they want to be involved in something that you shouldn't even want to be involved in. That's how backwards they are, but that's all I had. Thank you, brother. And, she, and and my man made a good point. Man, these folks ain't got no bargaining chips no more. Y'all can't threaten us with what you're going to take away. Y'all ain't giving us shit. See, this is why we're so codified now. And nobody's afraid. Y'all can't threaten us with nothing. Like Michael Rappaport. Oh, yeah, we, we're keeping a list. Yeah, me and my Jewish friends, we, we've been having meetings. And we're keeping a list of who's been naughty and who's been nice. Man, like, we're scared. What you giving us? You got to give us something in order to take something away. You're not giving us anything. They've already talked against reparations for us. They're not for that. And we're cool. Okay. We still campaigning, though. People, they ain't got no bargaining chips no more. And right now, a lot of black folks are getting over that fear of deprivation. We got this thing where, well, let's keep quiet or they're going to take something away from us. That fear is gone because we're looking around and we're like, we ain't really got nothing like that. So we might as well go for hours. You see? They're not going to see the, the scare tactics ain't working no more. See, the Democrats were real good at that. Hey, man, forget about reparations. Y'all better vote for us because if you Trump get in office, oh, boy. Ooh, y'all been not. It's gonna be hell to pay when Trump get in office. Oh, no. ooh, ooh, the scary Trump, the white supremacists, ooh, and the alt right, and you don't want Trump in office now. And Trump got in office, and didn't a damn thing happen to us. And that's why we're looking around like, oh, okay. See, that's the thing that that messed them up. That's that messed the Democrats up. They tried to oversell the Trump boogeyman stuff. And we're looking like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. All of the weird shit that happened to black people was happening under the damn Democrats. But no, Trump, Trump's America. Trump. No, 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 no. Biden and Obama. Most of the killings of black people out here on the streets by race soldiers was under Biden and Obama. Don't y'all do that Trump shit. Most of these killings of black people that they let happen, these were happening in Democratic run cities with Democratic police chiefs, Democratic mayors. You understand? Ferguson, all of these places. Up there in um, Minnesota, these are the Democrats. They're not going to scare us with the boogeyman right wingers. And that's where they messed up. When Alton Sterling, that was under the Democrats. Philando Castile, under the Democrats. Eric Garner, under the Democrats. Tamir Rice, under the Democrats. All these people killing black folks and just walking off scot-free. That happened under the Democrats. The Democrats didn't do shit, but created a, a bogus controlled opposition movement with the Black Lives Matter bedwinches that was co-opting the energy that was really popping off in the streets. They tried to create their little grassroots movement to head off that rebellious energy that was popping off in the streets. That's why up in Ferguson, so many of the real riders were getting killed mysteriously. And then all of these weird Negroes started popping up as the leaders. This is why we started to delineate. That was one of the main reasons we said, hey, we need to look around and see who's who. 
that was one of the main reasons the delineation movement started to pop off because we would go to these protests all around the country and you know we're ready for some action we were like what we trying to do let's let's get something popping let's get some justice popping and then we look around and niggas twerking and doing the wet coochie challenge and all of this weird stuff and we start asking around who are these people is this your man? Is, do, do you do you know this guy? And the people in the local areas was like, no, I thought they came with you. And we're like, no, I don't know these niggas. And we don't know them either. So we started checking everybody's paperwork. We start seeing all these weird Negroes pop up with Black Lives Matter signs and yelling and bullhorns and They'll say one thing, oh, no justice, no peace, all these killings, and we need to understand trans lives matter too. And we're like, uh, uh, what? What the, who, who is this nigga? Whose man is this? So we started seeing that type of stuff all around the board. And then we start checking people's paperwork, like, hey, where is this nigga from? Where is his mama from? Because in foundational Black American society, somebody knows somebody. We know people. Everybody kind of knows each other. When somebody pops up, somebody can verify that person. Well, our parents are very good at that. Like, Mom, who is that person? Oh, that's Clodelia's baby um, uncle's daughter. Okay. Yeah. Remember Clodelia? I went to school with her grandmother. She had a baby out of wedlock by Leophis. Leophis... It went to another school, and that's his son. You know, you, you know how your mom and them the, people know. You know somebody. We be knowing people. Yeah, we know people. If you are from here, we know you. But then all of a sudden, these weird people start popping up, and nobody knew them. Nobody knew who these people were. The D. Ray McKessons. Remember him? He, he kind of fell off, but. He, he would pop up and nobody knew where this nigga came from. To this day, don't nobody know where he comes from. Nobody knows anything about this dude's background. This nigga just showed up in a blue vest. Like, hey, y'all, I'm the leader. And then the camera started going on this guy as the leader of black people. And everybody in the streets was like, who is this nigga? He ended up getting smacked up out there in Ferguson, too, by the way. The homie smacked him up for doing that. But people were like, who are these folks? And we got to understand how controlled opposition works. There's a lot of controlled opposition out here. Let's get um, FBA Goddess in here. FBA Goddess, how are you, dear? Where you at, beloved? Hey, Tariq. Um, I got two questions. One of them is, um, how do you feel about doing a compilation of your um, your past um, spaces that you did when you were talking to the tellers? Your ass is funny as hell. Um, if you want to laugh, all you got to do is go back and listen to your past. I have been having a good time listening to those, but... Oh, those are hilarious. Oh, my God. You yeah. should do that. A lot, a, lot of people, a lot of people cut them up and make compilation videos. There's a whole bunch. It's so many of them. So there's a lot of them already out there. And it's funny. But the other one is about this Derek Chauvin thing. Um, about the last name of that that guy. They claim he's supposed to be what a Mexican uh, mafia, but his last name is a Jewish last name. What do you think about that? Um, I put on my yeah. tin foil koofy this morning and I was like, mm, no, uh uh, that ain't that's a lie. Right, right. Thank you, dear. Yeah, so Derek Chauvin. They saying that this dude who stabbed him up is this white guy with a Jewish last. Listen, this is this is what they're telling you. It's a white dude with a Jewish last name who was in the Mexican mafia, who happened to be an FBI informant. He stabbed Chavin up twenty two times on Black Friday to show solidarity with Black Lives Matter. That's literally the official story. Family, that is the official story. I told y'all 
a week ago when when they said he got stabbed up. This is the biggest crock of horse shit I've ever heard in my life. This sounds like somebody from the CIA wrote a script. This is the worst writing ever. I believe this is, and I, I didn't told y'all from day one, I didn't believe that this dude really got poked up like that. I believe this is being manufactured to justify letting him out early. That's, that's my conjecture. I believe all of this is being manufactured so that will justify leaving, getting that man out of jail early. That story is horseshit, dude. That don't make no sense whatsoever. A white Jewish dude who was with the Mexican mafia, who was a police informant, stabbed up Chavin because he wanted to show solidarity with Black Lives Matter, and that's why he did it on Black Friday. That sounds like um, a wet dream for the white supremacist websites. That, that sounds like 4chan trolling. Come on, man. Sometimes you just got to put the tinfoil koofy on a little bit and just let it sit. I ain't buying none of that, dude. To the Mexican mafia, those dudes, many of them dudes are aligned with the damn Aryans. And uh, dude, there's so many holes in that nar narrative. It's a lot of holes in that story. So, all right, who is this person here? Somebody got a bunch of African flags. Is that a, I see you got one Nigerian flag. Is that a, is that a Ghanaian flag? What's that other flag? The brother with the bunny, put your microphone on, man. Okay, brother, um, oat milk, hop on, man. Oat milk, hop on. All right. So oat milk don't want to hop on. Let's get in umgame and game. Let's get umgame. Ingame. Let's turn your microphone on. Man, what is going on with y'all's phones, man? Um Damiano or Mgame? Are y'all in between Postmates orders? I don't know what's going on with y'all. All right, let me get some more people in. While you guys are delivering orders, uh, let's get Command Dev. Command Dev in here. Command Dev. All right, his thing is connecting. Why is everybody's phone all janky tonight, man? Y'all slowing up the game here. All right. Command Dev, are you ready? Some of y'all niggas are in these housing projects and the reception is bad. There's nothing wrong with the housing projects, but open the window. You know, the thick project walls. Okay. Let's get, um, let's get, um, Foxy Fry. Let's get Foxy Fry in here. Let me get Shay out of here because I don't know what Shay is doing. She's just sitting there. Like Foxy Fry. Okay, Umgame, you back? All right. I don't know why y'all getting in the mix and y'all can't talk. All right, let's get um, Fiad. All right. Fuad or Fiad, how am I pronouncing your name? Let's turn your microphone on, sir. What's up, Terry? Can you hear me? I can hear you. What's going on, brother? Uh, not much. Uh, I just wanted to put the tinfoil kufi hat back on and uh, mention uh, with the whole Israel and Palestine conflict going on. Um, it's a kind of a coincidence or maybe there's a connection to you know how they're trying to get a lot of prominent black Americans to speak on it. Yeah. And all of a sudden there are charges, uh, not charges, but accusations uh, of sexual assault with uh, certain people who are prominent 
like P. Diddy. <clears throat> but that that one might be a little bit different. But Jamie Foxx uh, recently got hit with uh, um, sexual assault charges. Right. Yeah. You know what? You know what? You might be so, on with some, brother. Yeah. So I'm, 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 I was just trying to figure out maybe if there's a connection because uh, Hollywood is run by a lot of people who favor Israel and they've been trying to get people to speak on it, especially black Americans. Mm. So, man, brother, you might be on to something right there, brother. I, I didn't think about that. Thank you for the call. Right. Huh. That, 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 you know, that's an interesting theory, you know, uh, a lot of black folks are, are being run through the ringer in the media. Is that a form of punishment? Because Michael Rappaport did say they got a list of who's naughty and nice. That's what Michael Rappaport says. And now they, a lot of black entertainers are just being thrown under the bus. So is this their little revenge? Well, they were doing that anyway even before the conflict started. So they that's the M.O. anyway. See, this is why we, black folks, every time the media starts demonizing black folks, we don't jump on that bandwagon so fast. We have to stop jumping on that bandwagon because what happens is a lot of black folks like to jump on the damn bandwagon when a black person is getting attacked so that you can get some clicks and views on your page which is a very fucked up habit that black folks got to stop doing. Learn how to get on code. When they do shit, they get on code. They're not attacking the people within white society. The, the white boy, what's his name? The NBA player who allegedly got caught up there with the, the underage girl. The underage, underage girl was posting on her social media that she got down with him. And, um, now the family is not cooperating with law enforcement and everybody's law enforcement is on code. They act like they can't do nothing. You don't see no white people attacking that dude. Not one. And you got scared niggas who won't even say nothing. Stephen A. Smith, Malika over there on an ESPN or whatever sports show. You understand? Everybody's getting on code. They're not dogpiling on that white boy. You understand? We don't be so quick to dogpile on folks, man, just because the white media throws some accusations out there. Because, again, they can be doing things for revenge purposes. And understand, the way the black masses react to something will determine whether the person will be canceled or not. See, we can stop a lot of that stuff. See, the problem is we jump on the bandwagon with the white folks against niggas, and that's a very bad habit we got to get out of, man. Because when we stay on code, that black person who they try to attack, it, it backfires. For example, Kyrie Irving. Remember, they tried to go after Kyrie Irving. It was the black community who stood with him. We didn't let them attack that brother and get him out of here. That's why they ended up backing off of him with that bullshit. That was because of the black grassroots and the black masses. We didn't dogpile on him. See, that shit only works when they can dogpile and get us to dogpile on them, too. We got to stop doing that. We really got to stop doing that. You see? And again, I'm not trying to excuse any kind of weird behavior. If a nigga's doing some weird behavior, that should be, you know, that should be handled. But the thing is, I'm just not getting on a dogpiling expedition with white society against black folks like that when they don't do it to their own. 